A while back, I made a review and tutorial about NVIDIA AI. With the original version of NVIDIA, I already had kind of a bad taste in my mouth going in because there were so many videos and promotions going around saying, oh, just type in what you want, click generate, and you'll have the perfect video with no editing. And that's crap. It does a lot of things and it can save you a lot of time. It's okay that it doesn't generate a perfect ready for primetime video in one click. But let's just be honest about it. Now, that being said, NVIDIA has updated to version 2.0. The new features in videos as they have in version 2.0 is now up to 25,000 characters in your prompt box, multiple speakers. The AI prompt box underneath the video preview is supposed to be faster and more accurate, changing music for each chapter and adjust voiceover speeds, more relevant stock images and videos, more subtitles, crisper scripts, more transitions, overlay effects, and a revamped music engine, multilingual support in 55 languages, and those languages are listed right here on this update announcement. Feel free to pause the video if you want to see if the language you're looking for is in there. Let's take version 2.0 for a test drive and see how it does. Logged into NVIDIA, this is the main generation screen here. By default, it says model V2.0. If you, for whatever reason, wanted to go back to the older version, you can just click this drop down here and switch it to version 1.0. At the top, we just have our freeform AI prompt box where you can give it a topic, language, and detailed instructions. Generate from there. The workflows are now down at the bottom. So if we look at those, you have YouTube explainer, script to video, YouTube shorts, and if we want to see more, click explore all. And what that adds is news video, TikTok video, Instagram reel, and then the plugin of clone your voice. Voice cloning in NVIDIA is not new, they had that in version 1, but if you haven't cloned your voice yet, it's nice that you have this little button right here in your workflow so that you don't have to go hunt for where and how to do that. We can close this back out. Now if we click one of these workflows, like if we said YouTube Shorts, it changes this freeform prompt box and now it gives us a little more structure and some fill in the blanks. First blank, it says create a blank YouTube Shorts about. This can be fast paced, very fast paced, or other. So let's say fast paced. We like things to move right along, especially with shorts, right? Next, we have the topic. What do we want this video to be about? I'm going to say fun facts about pet rabbits. Then it wants to know what we want for our background music. The example they give is upbeat and energetic. Maybe we'll just say fun and whimsical. The next spot here is language. I'm going to leave that at English. In the box next to language, it gives us the example of with subtle urban humor. Under the settings, the first thing we need to decide is the voice, and we can use any voice, or we can drop this down and say a male, a female, or my voice if you've cloned your voice. I'm happy to leave that on any. Now the next drop down where it says any voice, the first two that show up are my cloned voices, and I've named them Bob, and apparently I named the other one User's Voice, which is not very original. These names are pretty important because if you use a stock voice for your video, and then you decide you want to change it to your voice clone, you'll need to refer to them by name in that magic box, they call it, the AI prompt box, and say, change the voiceover to whatever the name is. So in my case, change the voiceover to Bob, or change the voiceover to user's voice. So user's voice probably isn't really helpful to identify and use later, so I probably want to change that. You can also pick by accents. You can have a clear American voice, California accent, Southern accent, some different accents here. You can also use a transatlantic voice or British or English. If we scroll down here a little bit further, we've got things like Spanish, French, Korean, Japanese, different languages, and I'm not sure how that would work since we've set the language up here to English, but we're just going to leave that on any voice. Now the next option where it says for the narrator, we can't do anything with that right now and it doesn't seem like we can even add another. And even if we change these and specify a voice, like if I said my voice and said yeah let's do voice one Bob, these are still non-operational. After you've generated your video, if you go into the edit script, you'll know that it has speakers assigned. The first one is narrator and then you'll have speaker one, speaker two, 
speaker three up through speaker five or six, something like that. But the only thing we can fiddle with here is the narrator voice. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to switch this to any and any, and we'll see what it comes up with. Subtitles. We were supposed to have some new options here. So add any, don't add any. Bold subtitles with a popping effect. No outline. Outline. Uh, the Hormozy style, word by word. It does look like there are a few new options in here. We'll go with the karaoke style. The watermark text is not important to me. The next option under settings is how much you want to use iStock assets. Remember your limits for iStock are based on whichever plan you're in, but you only have so many iStocks you can use every month. So if you want, you can drop this down and say use fewer iStock or don't use iStock at all or use it all the time, whatever floats your boat. The fifth option, although it's not labeled, it lets you choose what audio library you want to use. So you can tell it just use YouTube, do the best available, or just use Storyblocks. I'll say use the best audio available and click continue. Brings you back to this sort of open-ended prompt box and it shows you what it wrote in there. It's telling us how it took those fill in the blanks and created this big overarching prompt. So if you're gonna be creating similar videos, you wouldn't necessarily have to work through this workflow. At some point, you'll probably have memorized what it wants in this big prompt box. Click generate video. And in about 10 seconds or so, it brings us up to this screen, which asks us who our audience is. Is it pet owners, animal lovers, or kids? I'm just going to say animal lovers. Look and feel. This one still baffles me, and there's no more explanation than there was before about it. Do we want it to look and feel bright, whimsical, or fun? Well, I'd take all three. These options will change depending on the subject of your video. A lot of times they don't make any sense to me, and in this case, it's not much better. I guess we'll go with fun. And then the platform, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, or TikTok, we're going to stick with YouTube Shorts. Click continue. We're not going to sit here and watch the whole generation process because I'd fall asleep, you'd switch to another video. Yeah, just take the whole day in a different direction. We're just going to use the magic of editing to show you what it came up with. And our video about rabbits is ready. Let's see what it came up with. Rabbits, rabbits, rabbits. Bet you didn't know these fun facts about your bouncy buddies, huh? Did you know that rabbits can purr just like cats? Yep, that's right. When they're super happy, they make an adorable purring sound. And get this, rabbits have a 360 degree field of vision. They can see what's behind them without turning their heads. Talk about having eyes in the back of your head. Ever seen a bunny do a binky? That's when they jump in the air and twist their bodies. It's like their own little happy dance. Fun fact number four, rabbits can jump up to three feet high. So if you're thinking about rabbit proofing your home, think vertical. And here's a quirky one for you. Rabbits eat their own poop. Gross, but true. It's called psychotrophy, and it helps them get all the nutrients they need. So next time you see your rabbit hopping around, remember, they're not just cute. They're full of surprises. Thanks for hopping in. Like, comment, and subscribe for more bunny brilliance. Stay fluffy, friends. Now, if you're happy the way the video came out, just like it is, you can come over here to this download button, click the drop down, and choose download video. If you want to make changes, and in this case, I absolutely would, you can make changes in two different ways. One is by coming down here to what they call the magic box, which is the AI prompt box, typing in what you want, and clicking generate. For instance, if I wanted to change the voiceover to me instead of that dude, I can say change the voice to Bob, hit generate. It'll take it a minute to do its thing, and then it comes up and says voice change to Bob. Now let's make sure that it actually did. Rabbits, rabbits, rabbits. Bet you didn't know these fun facts about your bouncy buddies. All right, that is my voice clone. I just want to go to the end here. So next time you see your rabbit hopping around, Remember, they're not just cute, they're full of surprises. And that is definitely my voice clone, but now it has taken our YouTube Shorts video from one minute to one minute and six seconds. And that's not gonna work for a YouTube Short. It has to be under a minute. But I know there's some stuff in that script that I want to go away. In order to see the script, I'm gonna click the Edit button. That brings us in here to the first screen, which is the Edit Media tab. And this shows all the media that was used in this video. And on this tab, if for instance, I didn't like this sketch drawing and I wanted something a little different, I can just click on that. It'll show me down in the script where it's being played. I can cover to the search bar. I'll just type rabbit and we'll take this guy. If I just click on it, it will replace and put that guy in the place of that sketch. Once I'm done swapping out media, I can say apply changes. 
But then that brings us back to this preview. So we're going to click edit again. And now I want to go to the edit script tab, which is where I was headed in the first place, but got distracted by the media. And what I see here is the script, which is divided up into chapters. And usually for a short, yeah, this is one single chapter. And then each of these would be scenes. So we can edit the script here. If I just wanted this to say rabbits instead of rabbits, rabbits, rabbits. I can get rid of all that stuff there. Just hit the delete and that should shorten it up a bit. If I click the plus button here next to any scene, I can add a text element. There's also add media group, which is not enabled and add speaker change, which is not enabled. If I click the media button, it opens up this media group and it shows me the keywords that were used to get this media. If this doesn't match the scene, I can change this text and then let it find an image or video that matches whatever the new thing is that I've typed here. The next option you have is this speaker. This is the narrator at 1.1x, so that means it's speeding it up. And that's linked to that fast pace that we did in the beginning when we started to generate this video. If we did very fast pace, it would just increase that narrator speed. Now, if I click this change speaker to, Instead of narrator, I thought it would give me some options like some speaker names like my voice clone names or AI speakers. Yeah, not so much. If you drop that down, your choices are narrator and then you have to kind of hover over to see anything. But it's speaker one, speaker two, speaker three, speaker four, speaker five. That's not super helpful. I mean, this is how you would change and have different speakers on different scenes. But I guess you have to tie the speaker to one of these labels like narrator speaker one in order to get it to sync up and be what you want. You can also change the speed here. Like I said, it's currently on 1.1 X. That's fine. It didn't sound terrible to me. There are entire scenes here that I just don't even want this being one of them. I just delete the text and I don't even really want this in here either. I want to get right into it and let's scroll down to the bottom because in my experience in video, just like any AI that writes scripts tends to add a bunch of junk that I don't want. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. We'll leave the rest here and we'll say apply changes. It pops up and tells us that it is changing the script. Now let's see what it's done since we've deleted those portions of the script. Did you know that rabbits can purr just like cats? All right, that's we changed the beginning. Now let's go to the end. Rises. Thanks for hopping in. If we weren't happy with this change or any change we make, we can just hit the undo button. That's my favorite button in every application. Those scenes that I deleted all the text in the scene those scenes are now gone, which is great. Now that hasn't always been my experience. In fact, just a few days ago when I was experimenting with this and I took out all the text in a scene, it left the scene in. So maybe that was just a bug that's been fixed. Other things you can do in this edit script tab, if you click the three dots up here on the right, drop that down, you can duplicate the chapter, add a chapter before, add one after, or delete the chapter. Since there's only one chapter here, if I delete it, I'm deleting the whole thing. I don't want to do that. And given that this is a one minute short, one chapter will be just fine. The edit music tab is new in version 2.0, and this is where we can swap out our background music. This is the music we're currently using. We can sample that. If we hit the three dots, we could turn the loop off if we only wanted it to play once. We can adjust the volume. If we don't want background music at all, we can just slide this down to zero or click the mute button, which will zero it automatically. You can search for and sample tracks here. I'm just not a fan of background music. If you are, it's here for you. So we'll hit apply changes here. Let's go over to download. We'll hit that drop down and we'll export project to timeline. And it pops up and is very straightforward with us that this is an experimental feature and you might lose your whole project editing in here. And that's clue number one that I probably don't want to edit in NVIDIA's experimental video editor. Nonetheless, I'll show you around. You have your assets on the left. You can upload other things. Maybe you want to put your logo on top of the video or something. You can do that. You've got albums over here for things you've collected. You've got trash for things you've gotten rid of. Text if you want to add text on your video. We're going to just switch that back to assets. These are not necessarily things that are in your video, but things that you have available to you. 
you have the preview window, which is pretty obvious. And then down below, you have the timeline. We can make that timeline bigger so that we can see what's actually on the timeline. You have the video tracks. It's showing us video two, video one. Then you have audio tracks, audio one, audio two, and audio three. So voice music. I don't know what audio one is. It says it's a nested audio timeline. Perhaps that's a placeholder for two and three. But this becomes really unusable to me because there's absolutely no waveform in the audio and a timeline editor to me without a waveform just doesn't do me a whole lot of good if you select a video here so we select our five fun facts video on the timeline you have some properties over here on the right drag this out so you can see what's actually going on and you can make some changes to that video if you drag your playhead out somewhere else and you want to make a change on the timeline you can right click and split or you can ripple delete or do a lift delete if you want to zoom in on certain pieces you can click any of these things that are along the top of the timeline here such as the brand watermark the brand watermark text the nvidia logo there's a whole lot of that going on from frame to frame and scene to scene not really useful to me now another thing that's not so fun is since i took that into the editor and closed out of the editor I'm back on my home screen and I see my history, but my rabbit video isn't in my history. I can say show more. It's still not there. And I believe that eventually it pops up in here. I'm not sure what the delay is, but that was my experience. The last time I ended up coming out of the AI video editor is that it eventually showed up in my history. It just wasn't there right away. That's kind of weird. So I won't be able to show you the other things that I would like to change about that video before I would consider it usable. Some of the images that were chosen were just no good. It was using 16 by nine landscape video that just wasn't working for a vertical video. I understand it's a different aspect ratio and you got to kind of make things fit, but this wasn't working because we were just zoomed in on like the belly of the rabbit. So it was just fur covering the screen and not much else you couldn't even tell you were looking at a rabbit so we would need to swap out some of those videos and images and make them make a little bit more sense the pacing was just off to me there were points in the narration where the pauses just seemed kind of weird and long so i'd want to make changes there and there were probably a few more things I'd want to tweak about that script. And my point to all that is not to bash in video, as I've said before in my original review and tutorial. It can be really helpful in creating a video. If you're creating a one minute video and you're going to have 20 different clips or images in there and in video gets 10 of those right, well, that's 10 you don't have to go search for. It can also in one place generate the script for you, pick a voiceover, or put your voice clone on it, add the captions, and anything that it gets right is something that you don't have to do manually. I do not, however, buy the theory that has been promoted so much that within video, you type in text of what you want, click a button, and poof, you've got a video ready to go up on YouTube. I've not generated a single video in here that I thought was ready for prime time. Every single one requires some editing. Now, that's not a bad thing. I just wish the folks that were promoting in video would be more honest about it and tell you what it actually does instead of promising things that are not realistic. Now, let me put my soapbox away and we'll do something a little bit different. We're going to skip the workflows and plugins this time. We're going to leave it on model V2 and we're going to give it a little bit more direction. What I've created here is the dumbest story of all time. I told it to create a two minute YouTube video about a couple who come home from the movies to find their home has been robbed. The only thing missing is the bread from their kitchen. Include the line, the baghead burglar has struck again. Their home's a typical American home in the suburbs. The video's funny twist on a dramatic story. The script and scenes are suspenseful and scary. At the end, the couple finds all their bread in the refrigerator and remembers they put it in there before they left and realize they weren't robbed at all. Use a serious English voice with an American accent. Background music should be scary and suspenseful until the couple realizes they weren't robbed. Then change the music to something fun and silly. We're going to hit generate on that. It's going to come up and ask us those three weird questions that give me choices that usually don't make a whole lot of sense. At least not to me, but maybe I'm an idiot. For audience, do we want comedy lovers, couples, or suburban families? Look and feel, dramatic, suspenseful, humorous. Well, it's all three depending on what part of the video we're talking about. I don't know, I guess we'll make the audience couples and continue. We'll let the robots do their thing. And we've got a video. The opening scene looks good. Let's see where it goes. Well, it would be nice if it would go, but it 
it's not going. If we edit, okay, it looks like it's all there. Looks like there's a script there. Perhaps if we refresh the browser. It was a quiet night in the suburbs. John and Emma had just returned from a relaxing evening at the movies. They pulled into their driveway ready to unwind, but as they approached their front door, they felt an eerie chill. The door was ajar. Their hearts raced. They exchanged nervous glances and slowly stepped inside. The house was dark. Silence filled the air. They crept through the hallway, their footsteps echoing. They reached the kitchen. Emma gasped. The cupboards were open and the countertops were bare. Everything seemed untouched except one crucial item. John turned to her, his face pale. The bread. It's gone. Emma stifled a scream. The baguette burglar has struck again, she whispered. John nodded solemnly. They had heard the rumors, but never imagined it would happen to them. They checked every room, heart pounding. No signs of forced entry, no other items missing, just the bread. The mysterious baguette burglar had left them puzzled and frightened. Then, Emma had an idea. She rushed to the refrigerator and threw open the door. There, on the shelves, sat all their bread. Baguettes, loaves, rolls, everything. John laughed nervously. Emma joined in, the tension melting away. They remembered. They had put all the bread in the fridge before they left. Relief washed over them as they realized they hadn't been robbed at all. The baguette burglar was just a figment of their imagination. With a sigh, they settled in for the night, grateful for the safety of their home and the humor of the situation. Sometimes, the scariest mysteries have the silliest solutions. End screen text. Remember to always check the fridge. So one thing that I asked it to do was to change that music from suspenseful and creepy to fun and silly when they realized that the bread was just in the fridge. It did not do that. Looking at the script, it did include the line that I specifically gave it about the baguette burglar has struck again. I also noticed that toward the end, the narrator said, end screen text, remember to always check the fridge. I guess that was supposed to pop up on the screen as text and not be something the narrator said. That would be easy enough to fix. We could just take out the end screen text part. Or if we wanted that to be end screen text, we could just add that right here. Using a title style, the other options are lower third and listicle. We can just add that and now we have that text. Click apply changes. The background music I thought was appropriate up until things changed and they realized that they hadn't been robbed. You know, I really wanted that to go from suspenseful to lighthearted, funny, silly at that point and it didn't do that. The images and videos that it chose, a lot of those need changing. We don't need the creepy guy with the knife in there. They didn't encounter someone in the house. Then walking down the hall, this, I don't even know what that was. Then there's a couple in a warehouse. I mean, I understand with stock video and stock clips, you're not going to get a consistent character. But I think that could have been a little better showing the house, showing the bread, something like that. Maybe using darker images. I have no idea what the money was about. That didn't make any sense. And at one point when the couple's talking, they appear to be in a car dealership. Again, easy enough to swap any of those out. Just click on it, search for whatever you want, and drop it in there. Now let's see if our rabbits showed up in our history yet. And yes, they are finally there. So our bunnies disappeared for a while, but they found their way home. Now let's try one of these other workflows. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click the explore all and I'm going to grab the news video option. Create a news video about the Big Mac index. Search the news and also check. We'll leave that blank. It says you could put in a Wikipedia link or something like that. Maybe a link to a news article. Make the background music. I'm just going to leave that blank. Let's say use a male clear American voice for speaker one. And in this case, it is letting us drop down and pick different speakers. Maybe the reason we couldn't drop down and choose different speakers or add a speaker before is because it was a short, but let's go ahead and add another one. Let's have a female, make her a clear American voice too, and we'll make her speaker two. So we have speaker one and speaker two. I'll leave it on add any subtitles. 
We'll leave that on use iStock as needed. Just say use the best audio available. Click continue. And the full prompt to put together is create a news video about the Big Mac index. Search the news. Settings. Use a male clear American voice for speaker one, female clear American for speaker two. Use the best audio available. And let's say generate video. And we're back to our three options here. Do we want our audience to be economics enthusiasts, travelers, or students? Really none of the above. Uh, it'd be general audience or I don't know trivia buffs. We'll stay with economics enthusiasts, I suppose. Look and feel bright, clean, or informative. I don't think I've seen informative before. We'll pick that. Platform. We're just going to stick with YouTube and continue. And now it should be putting things together. And here it is. We didn't specify a time. It looks like it's a minute and 15 seconds. We'll click play. You need to watch this if you struggle with understanding exchange rates. Or think a burger is just a burger. Speaker 1. Clear American male voice. The Big Mac Index, created by The Economist in 1986, is a fun way to see if currencies are valued correctly. It does this by comparing the cost of a Big Mac in various countries using their local currencies converted to US dollars. Speaker 2, clear American female voice. Here's the scoop. The Big Mac is essentially the same everywhere. It's reading out Speaker 1, Speaker 2 in the script instead of switching between Speaker 1 and Speaker 2. That's kind of annoying. Let's go to Edit and Edit Script. Change that to Speaker 1. And I think we can leave it as Speaker 1 until we want to switch to Speaker 2. So let's take out this direction that shouldn't have been in there. Come down to where we change to Speaker 2. We hit the plus sign. Add Speaker Change. Speaker 2. Add. Take out this direction that it's currently reading of Speaker 2, Clear American female voice and now speaker one take that out and change it switch to speaker two apply those changes all right let's back up to the beginning and try again watch this if you struggle with understanding exchange rates or think a burger is just a burger the big mac index created by the economist in 1986 is a fun way to see if currencies are valued correctly it does this by comparing the cost of a Big Mac in various countries using their local currencies converted to US dollars. Here's the scoop. The Big Mac is essentially the same everywhere. So if it costs more in one place than another, it tells us about the purchasing power of that country's currency. For example, in 2024, a Big Mac in Switzerland. Okay, the background music is driving me batty. And here's how we're going to fix that. Change the volume of the background music to zero. While in India, it's closer to $2. These differences highlight how much your dollar can stretch in different parts of the world. And it's not just about burgers. This index provides insights into global economics. So we were able to manually change it by editing the script. We were able to change and have the multiple speakers. But somewhere in doing that, we lost the notes that it should be a clear American male and a clear American female. That's what I had specified in the beginning. Obviously, it didn't get those directions right and went off track. So then when we added them manually, now we just got random voices. If I wanted to change that, I would have to come in here and say, change the voice of speaker two, because that's the label of this thing. Change the voice of speaker two to a clear American male voice. But I think you get the point by now, so we're not going to fool with this video anymore. So going back to our announcement of all the changes in version 2.0, let's see how we did. The longer prompts, we didn't really try and push it to 25,000 characters. I guess that might be really handy if you want to include your own script and it's sort of long because you can with NVIDIA specify your instructions and then say use the following script and drop it in there. Multiple speakers we had some issues with that. I don't know if the magic box is necessarily faster. I'll say it did all right for what we asked it to do. It's nice to have the edit music tab so that we can sample and change the music if you want to. Again, I prefer to just mute it. We did see the availability to increase or decrease the voiceover speeds. I don't know that the stock images and videos were necessarily more relevant than they were before. Didn't feel like it to me. The subtitle styles, there were more options to choose from. As far as the crisper scripts, I suppose they had less of the bloat in the beginning and the end. They didn't spend a paragraph saying, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about this, blah, blah, blah. The enhanced performance, it, you know, it didn't really crash. It locked up that one time and refresh got us going again. Not super impressed by the fact that our rabbit video just disappeared in cyberspace for a little while before it showed back up again. We did not play with the multilingual support today, but you can come right here to this prompt box and type something like, 
translate the video to Spanish and change the voice to Bob speaking Spanish. And then it will translate the video into Spanish. And then it would, because I said change the voice to Bob speaking Spanish, it would use my voice clone named Bob. So will I be making all my videos with NVIDIA? Absolutely not. Again, I think it's a useful tool, particularly because it can help you get a whole bunch of B-roll knocked out of the way pretty simply, especially if you're bringing in your own script. It is neat that now it can do multiple different voices, although you saw we had to kind of tell it to do different voices. It didn't follow the instructions from the original prompt. The, the main thing is don't go into NVIDIA expecting that you're going to type in a prompt and say, give me a video about the seven wonders of the world and have it pop something out that you're like, this is perfect. I'm going to have millions of views if I just publish this the way it is. Maybe it happens. It's not happened for me yet. I've not seen any of the demos of it where that happened that way. It can knock out a lot of the work for you, but then it needs some editing, in my opinion. If you want to try out in video, there's a link in the description. I am an affiliate, so if you end up going beyond the free tier there and want to try one of the paid subscriptions, I may end up receiving a small commission. I sincerely appreciate that, by the way, but there is a free trial that you can mess with there. Definitely some limitations on that, but it might be enough to tell you whether you like the fit and feel of the whole platform. That's the update on NVIDIA version 2.0. I hope you found this helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.